Welcome back. Uh, good morning. In this course of statistical mechanics, um, we are dealing with equilibrium phenomena. So, just a brief reminder that uh, statistical mechanics uh, is broadly divided into two one is equilibrium statistical mechanics. Uh, this non equilibrium non equilibrium stat max this is the one that we deal with the uh, thermodynamics and very very important part thermodynamic properties and also the phase transition Here we do relaxation phenomena, chemical kinetics, and then uh, time dependent processes. Now, uh, in this, uh, so we are dealing with in this uh, equilibrium statistical mechanics, and we already started with uh, the basic postulates and the hypothesis and with that we went to construct the uh, methodology which was built on the failure of uh, uh, well failure in a, in a very very a sense uh, he succeeded a lot but he failed to develop a theory of kinetic theory of matter or uh, at those days used to be called uh, heat and uh, the reason was that Boltzmann tried to go all the way by starting a time dependent phenomena. So, what Boltzmann was trying to develop was a theory of non equilibrium or time dependent phenomena, non equilibrium statistical mechanics. And then he landed in the difficulty that the hierarchy, I discussed the hierarchy that he started with single particle um, distributions and then. Uh, that he tried to develop a distribution for position of a, a single particle in position and momentum, but he found that gets connected to two particle distribution. Then he made it uh, approximation which he called molecular chaos and that uh, landed him into a lot of difficulty, but anyway that this project did not work out. Then uh, however, Willard Gibbs sitting there at the Yale University in uh, New Haven, he had the brilliant idea. He realized that this approach will not work. So, he went on to develop the what is the modern equilibrium statistical mechanics. He realized that to do an equilibrium stat mac, we do not need to know the trajectory, we do not know the detailed dynamics because thermodynamic properties are independent of time. But it was the concept of ensemble is one of the most, most brilliant idea that uh, uh, man, mankind has come up with is somewhat less given credit to, but he then said okay, I can thought of doing equilibrium statistical mechanics, I need to do a probability distribution, but probability distribution mean how? I need to consider particles in uh, the system is in different microscopic states. How do I now create this microscopic states without going Boltzmann way? Then he created a mental replica. And the basic idea is that the number of microscopic states is so huge that the systems, the mental replica of my original system all reside in different microscopic states. So, now he came up with these two postulates, you know ensemble average equal to time average. So, now the uh, uh, macroscopic thermodynamic properties of the system are the average of the systems of the ensemble and each system is residing in a different microscopic state. So, as if uh, Boltzmann trajectory is going through all these systems, but however, he now had to after making the ensemble average or time average, 
he had to make sure the system really indeed goes through all that that is what uh, and you have to talk of uh, distribution. So, all the microscopic states at constant energy uh, they are equally probable that is the assumption second uh, postulate. And then he had to say ok my system must go through all these things and uh, the uh, Boltzmann trajectory as I was saying a minute before and that is the ergodic hypothesis ok. So, that is started then we went to microcanonical ensemble and microcanonical partition function which is the entropy actually partition function omega number of microscopic states and thermodynamic potential each ensemble comes with a partition function and each partition function comes with the thermodynamic potential and from that thermodynamic potential we can calculate the thermodynamic properties. In microcanonical ensemble NV ensemble we have already discussed omega total number of microscopic states is the partition function and entropy is S k b l n omega that is why k b the term Boltzmann constant comes because with the Boltzmann uh, Boltzmann is the one who uh, introduced it. So, that is the canonic micro canonical partition function. Now, um, that of course, becomes very difficult and also not practical because systems are not in constant energy. You can have constant volume uh, but and even number, but energy is always fluctuating because you cannot isolate systems. So, then Bolch, um, um, Gibbs with another brilliant uh, thing introduced the canonical uh, ensemble, where now the particles, the systems, particles in the system is allowed to exchange energy with the surrounding. So, the energy is not conserved, but energy is replaced by conjugate variable which is the temperature. So, the ensemble has now constant number, constant volume, constant temperature, so the NVT and that gives rise to the canonical ensemble and the canonical partition function which is denoted by Q and the logarithmic of the Q minus K B T L N Q gives you the Helmholtz free energy and as we discussed the, that is the advantage of this Helmholtz free energy is that I can get equation of state like pressure by a volume derivative of free energy, entropy by temperature derivative of the free energy and then specific heat by the temperature derivative of entropy. So, these are just very beautifully flows that it was kind of fortunate that in NVT we get uh, that we are not that fortunate we want to NPT because NPT the thermodynamic potential and partition functions are not that uh, uh, helpful, they are still useful quantities. Equilibrium statistical mechanics however, one very important thing of uh, in addition to this thermodynamics which we get from ensemble, the important thing is the uh, phase transition. That is the one of the real mandate of, uh, of uh, statistical mechanics is to describe the phase transition. Because phase transition as I described is a uh, uh, amazingly uh, beautiful thing and is also uh, really, really very, very striking because you are changing a control parameter by infinitesimally small amount and you are getting a huge change. Uh, and we said that that is the definition of phase transition that control parameter is changed by an infinitesimal amount, but the A is changed by um, huge amount. So, uh, so it is like this that I can uh, entropy against temperature, then uh, this is the way if this is the liquid, this is the gas. So, look at the sharpness, look at the sharpness. So, all the derivatives diverge. In a, this is the first order of phase transition, a fast derivative of the free energy. We discussed that air in phase classification. The fast derivative of free energy discontinuous give you the fa, a first order of phase transition. But when the second derivative of the free energy, like specific it acts funny, then we call that a second order of phase transition. Uh, this particular is a continuous type second order two kinds of second order phase transition that we the, this is the gas liquid or order disorder or magnetic ferromagnetic paramagnetic transition. Superconducting transition is there in first uh, really jump discontinuity like this kind of discontinuity in the second derivative that is the resistance or resistivity ok. So, these are the basic elementary things of phase transitions the definition of what is a phase transition. Then we want to know um, why and how and why does the phase transition take place and then, then we come up with the thermodynamic logic ok phase transition takes place because uh, we have a another minima appear. So, this is in first order phase transition that another minimum appears and that minimum now uh, becomes deeper as I lower temperature and this old, old phase is gets replaced by the new phase. So, this is a free energy description on uh, why. Now, 
uh, in this case the spherical energy becomes uh, flatter and flatter and we get huge fluctuations on a flat free energy surface because fluctuation does not cost any energy and that is the way this was described. This description all these came by in terms of Landau. So, Landau is introduced the kind of free energy landscape picture of phase transition and this then led to the Landau theory of phase transition, the definition of order parameter and many, many other beautiful things. And we, we, we learned how to talk of free energy expansion in order parameter, we learned to calculate the changes in uh, entropy from this uh, theory uh, and we learn, learn to change this, how to describe this kind of uh, divergence. The Landau theory is not a perfect theory. It took a lot of time for people to correct it, by almost uh, 40 years, but people did correct it and we have a much more complete theory of phase transition. Now, so the Landau theory which describes the free energy in terms of things, uh, 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 I, as I told you was a parallel uh, almost uh, parallel with the, the other theory which was developed more quantitatively from a physical chemist perspective. So, it was more, uh, more um, specialized, uh, but more quantitative. So, that was the Mayer's theory. So, Mayer's theory described that how gas can go into liquid and how you can develop a VDL series. So, and the picture that may have developed and this beautiful uh, that we get it, the definition of virial uh, So, this was um, uh, almost uh, uh, last century the virial series was introduced or something like that in the beginning of 1900 or so. However, we did not know what is the second virial coefficient, third virial coefficient. Mayer's theory to give us an analytical expression in terms of intermolecular interaction and that is just beautiful because we, uh, that I discussed last class, we have the intermolecular interactions. B2, we can measure experimentally because this is just nothing but I uh, P versus rho and this is ideal gas, this goes like that. So, I know this. So, I can now have an expression for B2 in terms of intermolecular interaction you are, then I can put that um, and play around with that and I can get a potential and that was the first force field that was developed as I described once before. So, these are extremely important theory. One more success of Mayer's theory is that Mayer's theory gave us a picture, a physical picture how a gas can go into liquid and that was used in many other things like in lattice theories and many other cases. It is very, very important to appreciate the continuity and the appreciate the uh, flow of development of a subject, the historical perspective. Now, uh, uh, Mayer's theory then told us that okay, there are suddenly large clusters appear in the system and we, 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 we know that this is not perfectly a physical cluster because this everything is very mathematically defined, it does not, there is real chemical bond lasting for a long time not there. There are mathematical definition in terms of Mayer a function f that you described. But it nevertheless tells you how a big picture appears. Now, before I go to the next thing, in the Mayer's theory, there are two more things that we must discuss and not in great detail, but in a semi quantitative level. One is the Sol gel transition. This is a very common phenomena that when you have a sol and you have polymers. And then you have here this, uh, you have the polymers with functionality 3 or 4. Then uh, when you increase the concentration or uh, um, lower the temperature, though it is not true uh, thermodynamics, then what happens that it, uh, they form a gel phase. How do I know they form a gel phase? The viscosity diverges. So, sol gel transition is a clustering transition. It is a clustering transition, large clusters appears. There is a very weak thermodynamic uh, signature. The sol gel transition is a very common phase transition 
usually if it is a subject of polymer physics and polymer science though it is not done that well in polymer thing, but this is very important in the in the industrial context in industrial chemistry the formation of a gel. Uh, we, we routinely form gel not only just the gelatin that you eat, you, you eat uh, as, a uh, as a dessert, uh, but in, in many many industrial functions we, we, we form soil gel transition, rubber is can be considered as the formation by this kind of chemical uh, process where sulphur acts as the vulcanization or different carbon groups. Okay. So, then what is the essence of soil gel transition? How do I describe soil gel transition qualitatively? I will then describe how it is done quantitatively. So, this is a very, very interesting. The theory that was developed of soil gel transition was done by two people at the same time. One person is Paul Flory and uh, who is considered father of polymer physics and it was also done at the same time uh, by uh, Walter Stockmayer. Uh, this I think 1943, I think this is little before 1941. What both of them considered, okay, this is not really a thermodynamic transition, it is a clustering transition. So, look, look and these are real clusters now, chemical bonds are forming, okay. That you are bringing a monomer which is a functionality 3 or 4 and they are connected together to form a branch. Sometime there are rings also, but the huge branch that is forming. So, suddenly, so there is again a phase transition because suddenly at some point the clusters becoming infinite. So, how do I describe that? Both of them came out with identical description and I will describe the Stockmayer's one because that follows Joseph Mayer's treatment and Stockmayer was a student of Joseph Mayer. So, now the way they consider both of them, they let me consider ML exactly the way it did Mayer. ML is the number of clusters or polymers or polymers of size L. They are now there are in number of uh, monomers. So, I have a condition L m L equal to n. Now, L m L this quantity then, this quantity then, this quantity is number of monomers in a cluster of size L is L m L. Okay. Then there is one more quantity both of them considered which is a very interesting quantity which is which is uh, which is l uh, which is l square m l so this is the second moment so m l is a distribution this is the first moment and this is second moment and let me call that comp a, a susceptibility now, what the way Stockmayer went about doing it is very interesting. Stockmayer now considered exactly what Mayer did that I give you that at a given time my system at a given extent of reaction that means certain amount of reaction has taken place, then the uh, uh, that this ML has formed. How many ways now I can distribute monomer? into a uh, polymer. So, they, then he went around doing again saying the same way Mayer did that how many ways I can form omega out of a, um, uh, a ML and a number of clusters. Then what um, uh, Stockmayer went around doing he maximizes these quantity these DML with respect to ML or uh, ln he maximizes and found out the most probable distribution 
exactly the way Mayer did. In, in there, there is a non trivial calculation, just Mayer had a non trivial calculation of finding the which led to the partition function. He had a non trivial calculation to <coughs> calculating that if each, um, uh, each of my monomer has a functionality f. then how do I calculate omega? That is the crux of a very, very difficult calculation. Once you do that calculation and you can find out the distribution A ML star, then he found that if I now plot L M L star, which is the same I discussed that when uh, in, a, in a system of large size, the most probable distribution is same as the average L then one finds that I plot it against L, then before the say I am increasing the density and uh, putting more and more monomer in my box and they are solved, but certain a critical uh, density is reached and then uh, this huge cluster appears. So, now this is now will be given like this at a low density it will be mostly monomer, maybe few dimer, then I am going on increasing, then there is this kind of tail appears. Then this, this actually comes down, number of monomer comes down and then there is nothing in between, the intermediate population disappears because they become a large. So, this is the gel phase. The analysis I am not going to going, go, doing in great detail, but this is almost because one can go into doing a very detailed job that is not necessary in this course, but one need to know that the sol gel transition formulated in a stock mayor way is, a, 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 is exactly, exactly same as, uh, as a Mayer's theory of condensation. So, uh, then the one can calculate the viscosity of the system in a polymer, we can, we, when you do polymer we will do that in more detail the this, this this kind of things, but here I just want to bring it to the uh, 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 attention to this and one more transition which are very similar and then I will describe a few quantitative aspects of that which is the percolation. This you might have heard a lot. This is essentially same as the sol gel transition, but the difference is that uh, percolation transition is in solid state physics and we consider almost always on lattice. So, basically you have a lattice, I will briefly describe what is the percolation transition, then one or two quantitative aspects. Sol gel transition and percolation transition are essentially the same uh, from the point of view of phase transition, though they are very different systems. As I told you, this is one of the greatness of the universality of um, uh, phase transition that you, you do first order phase transition of uh, one, once I say it is a first order phase transition, I immediately it comes to my mind okay, then this transition will have a uh, first derivative uh, discontinuous jump discontinuity, then I will have a latent heat, I will have a volume change and uh, this, these are the property. I say second order continuous phase transition, I know okay specific it will diverge. So, first order phase transition of many different materials and uh, just, just uh, amazing universality that we, we, we take and I will talk a little bit of the universality uh, little bit now before we go to the thing in a, that uh, all these things will be done little bit more detail later. But right now uh, percolation transition is in solid state physics, it comes in the conductivity problem. Uh, basically when so you have two kinds of species in the system, one is a conducting and this is a non-conducting and you have dispersed them in many micro crystallites. In, in, a, in a lattice phase gold nanoparticles and uh, that is with another uh, carbon nanoparticle, maybe you have a, a, a binary mixture of the two. Now, one of them contact current, other does not, uh, that does not. So, when you have very low density of uh, the conducting one, then there is no, no, no conduction, no current goes through that. This is a very important uh, uh, industrial or uh, practical thing. However, when you have the uh, the conducting one which is certain uh, uh, concentration, then suddenly you find the current comes in and 
So, the way it happens is that these guys they have, they have to form a chain. So, so it has to form a connected cluster. So, when the, this connected cluster is formed, it forms a path and current flows in this path. So, this is the percolation transition. Percolation transition then again is the formation sudden appearance of a connected cluster. So, uh, this the both percolation and solid gel transition are there is a something called the critical critical uh, occupation probability. Critical population, what is the this the red ones? They have to be certain number, and that number goes by critical percolation is given as uh, Z is the coordination number. So, when for example, in a, you can imagine that in a two dimension lattice square lattice where z is 4, there z is 4, your percolation probability is 1 by 4 minus 1 is 1 over 3. So, this space is now the uh, these red ones now has to be 33 percent when it reaches 33 percent before 33 percent is again completely dramatic and sudden even at 30 percent you see that there are disconnected clusters intermediate size disconnected clusters but as soon as you reach the within 0 0.01 percent of the 1 3 this cluster suddenly appears so it has both these and solgel transition has all these things these kind of expression of um, these kind of expressions also there exist one one for a um, um, solid gel transition they are also you, you we describe in terms of this quantity l square l square ml and l square ml this chi again diverges with a at a given concentration of the monomers so in certain sense they have the characteristics of a phase transition both solid gel transition and percolation but both of them are clustering transition, both of them has to do with appearance of large clusters, both of them has the second moment shows divergence, this L square ml quantity is considered to shows divergence and like this divergence is happens with exponent something we will we'll, we'll talk later and there I will discuss percolation little bit in more detail and uh, uh, the, the derivation of these things a little bit more detail. But, uh, uh, I do not want to go into the these things, but to know that the this 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 description of solid gel transition and percolation transition are very similar in, to the Mayer's theory of condensation and in certain sense all three can be considered as a um, as appearance of a gigantic molecule, the appearance of a gigantic molecule that um, happens at a certain critical concentration or of the monomer and they leave, they do not have the very weak thermodynamic uh, uh, signatures thermodynamics you do not uh, see much but you see their properties like in solid gel transition is the viscosity that diverges in a percolation you suddenly in a lattice you see the current current starts flowing percolation also used very much in the flow of water in the sand uh, boxes or in the in the sand that the where there are in the connectivity is to be made for water to flow. Mm. So, these are very very similar things and quite universality and I, I cannot go into very detail uh, of these things right now instead we will now go on to do something different, but before that a little bit more of a transition that I want to just review and then go over uh, to that. So, so these are the uh, so we have done first order phase and, we, and first order phase transition and second order phase transition. They are universal and we have not talked of any specific systems. Uh, similarly, in solid gel transition and percolation, they are clustering transition in the mayor sense, and we have not uh, 
described any in detail any particular system. Uh, and uh, though, though some examples I will be given, they are given in my book and we will we'll probably do a little bit later. Before we go into something completely different, I just want to do one thing that you know when we do first order phase transition, I discuss of one thing which is called uh, hysteresis and this I also call is the same as uh, metastability. And I also told from Landau theory, uh, Landau's free energy surface, it means that we have um, free energy landscape, if I plot against the order parameters eta, then this is, if this is the minimum, then something else lurks there. So, when I go then further, then this becomes this, then it becomes. So, the, this is the metastable phase, this is the stable phase. When I lower the temperature, then so top temperature going down, and but this is T equal to transition temperature T T, and this temperature is below the transition temperature. So this is the old, and this is the new, old and new. Now new is more stable, but the minimum at old remains. Minimum at old remains, and that means the system can remain trapped. And this we see when we do hysteresis we plot um, H against magnetization M, we have a large H. So, it is now when it comes back, it does not go. So, even though I have switched the field, spins remain up, magnetization remain positive. And this we know in pressure versus density, this is Van der Waals loop, it is exactly the same thing. It is a beautiful actually, this analogy between magnetic system and the gas liquid system is one of the most wonderful thing. Uh, because we gain tremendously by comparing one with the other. Uh, so, here this is called hysteresis or metastability. Here, so when I pressure against density, this is the Maxwell. So, beyond this point, it should go over to liquid, but it does not. In the experiment, not just in Van der Waals theory, in experiments, this continues to stay and then an explosive transformation to. Uh, this is the metastable gas, this is the metastable gas that goes over to liquid. It just then goes like this uh, bang with a bang, it goes transferred to that. So, this is the essence of first order phase transition is the metastability. Now, why metastability happens? The metastability happens because once you have this kind of free energy, but the system which is trapped in the old phase. The barrier is the thermodynamic system. This is a thermodynamic barrier. There is a huge barrier. No way the system can cross this barrier. So, well, there is a way, but it is a in bulk transformation of the old to new is not possible. The way it is done is another beautiful thing that we will do next in the next class that is nucleation. So, this is the uh, end of this this particular uh, lecture and uh, so I discussed to you just uh, why I discussed you sol gel transition and uh, percolation transition and I did not go into very detail, uh, uh, but there are the similar thing Mayer's theory that mean the um, large clusters appear in the system and the method that is done uh, sol gel transition was done by Walter Stockmayer is same and uh, exactly same as uh, Stockmayer uh, as Mayer and uh, percolation you know, done in a more detailed quantitative way somewhat later uh, in the context of more of a critical phenomena. And uh, that is still critical phenomena is best, best understood in terms of the percolation that we will do in a later class. And, and I, I want to describe the man, I said the percolation probability 1 over z minus 1, exactly similar thing is there in uh, uh, 1 minus alpha, alpha is the extent of reaction and uh, in, in sol gel transition. So, the extent of reaction when certain the number which is given by the total number of bonds formed actually 2 n minus m by n m that is the extent of reaction and your uh, critical thing is happens when extent of reaction reaches certain value.
which is matches with the data percolation. It's a very similar thing. That means the second moment diverges with exponent minus one. But I don't want to talk of exponent right now. I'll talk on the, when I do the uh, critical phenomena. But both have the signatures of phase transition in a cluster plane. Both so very weak thermodynamic anomaly and almost no thermodynamic anomaly. You cannot detect them uh, that a percolation transition has taken place with thermodynamics. You detect them by doing dynamics. Uh, but there is something very fundamental change in the nature and organization of the system has taken place, and that is this appearance of the large gigantic cluster, same as gas liquid transition. So, we stop here now and uh, we will we'll, we'll start with nucleation in the next class. <laughs>